Good morning, friends. Welcome to Old Saratoga Reformed Church for our worship service this morning. We're happy to see those of you who are here with us today, and we welcome those who are watching online. Jacob's Well, our newsletter, will be going out this week. We had some copier issues last week, so it did not get sent out on time. There is a sign-up sheet in the entryway for lemonade on the lawn after worship. We are hoping to start that next Sunday. Next Sunday, our worship leader will be Dick Behrens. Thank you ahead of time, Dick. And we will be holding another chicken barbecue in conjunction with the American Legion on Saturday, July 30th. There will be more information coming. Are there any other announcements this morning? In our prayers, this Thursday will be Ruth Hayes' 100th birthday. We wish her a very happy birthday and pray that God will continue to bless her. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for people all around the world who are suffering because of the actions of power-hungry leaders, and we pray for those who are listed on our announcement sheet. Are there any other prayer requests this morning? Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. Let us join together to worship the God who is faithful in helping us. Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Everything on earth will worship you. They will sing your praises shouting your name in glorious songs. Let the whole world bless our God and sing aloud his praises. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray together. We gather here today to worship and adore you, O God, for you and you alone are worthy of our praise. All that we have and all that we are comes from you. Be with us as we worship and stay with us as we go out into the world to serve you. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 60, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Jesus taught us that we deceive ourselves if we believe we have no sins, but that God is merciful and forgiving to those who ask for forgiveness. Please join me in praying the prayer of confession found in your bulletins. We come before you, O Lord, as flawed human beings who want to do better. Forgive us when we ignore your faithful gifts to us and seek things that are not in our best interest. Forgive us when we take the easy way out but complain about others not doing enough. Forgive us when we fall short of showing others your love by loving them as you have taught us to do. We ask your forgiveness knowing we don't deserve it, but believing your promise to be merciful and gracious to those who seek forgiveness. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 86. O oh Lord, you are so good so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask your aid. Hear also how Jesus said that we as his followers should live. We should love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our soul, with all our strength, and we should love each other as God loves us. Good morning. morning. Our liturgy today comes from Galatians chapter 6 and Luke chapter 10. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all all your blessings. Please illuminate your word to us today, stored in our hearts that we might live the lives that you would have us live. In Jesus' name, amen. From Galatians chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing them to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. And from Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord.
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. All we have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to our church. That slight variation of the hymn we just sang flowed through my mind at the close of last Sunday's <coughs> worship service and congregational and consistory meetings, which culminated in a signed contract with Pastor Susan Kerr to become our next minister. In a time when there is a nationwide shortage of ministers and a multitude of congregations looking for pastors just within our own classes, God has blessed us with someone who answered our job posting and who we believe will be a good match for us. One thing I don't think I have shared with you before is that Susan wasn't planning to apply for a pastoral position when she retired from her current congregation in the fall. She wanted to come back to upstate New York and write a book. She knew she would need some income, but figured she would be able to accomplish her financial goals by doing pulpit supply. She put in bids on several houses and was outbid on all of them. Finding a place to live was going to be more difficult than she anticipated. When she contacted Abby Norton Levering from Albany Synod to find out about getting on the pulpit supply list, Abby assured her she could do that, but asked if she would consider a part-time pastoral position as there were two local churches looking for new ministers. As I said, Susan had not planned on that. She hadn't even thought about it as a possibility, but decided to look into it. After what she describes as stalking us on Facebook, she decided to further investigate this new idea. She was excited about living in a historic parsonage, and based on our church profile and some insight from someone who was familiar with our congregation, she thought she would fit in well with us. She sent us an email with her application, and the process began. After the search committee read her paperwork, we set up interviews, watched her lead worship online at her current church in New Jersey, heard her preach at a neutral church, and recommended to consistory that we bring her here to meet the congregation and lead worship with the goal of having her be our next minister. Those things happened last week, and by now many of you know that everything went well and she will begin her ministry here right after Labor Day. God has answered our prayer for a new minister. And Susan, like the 72 new disciples that Luke wrote about, has answered God's call to help with the great harvest among so few other workers and to pray for more workers who will answer the call and accept God as their savior. She is enthusiastic about her work, but she is not coming to work by herself. We, too, must decide that we will answer God's call to serve alongside her. Paul's letter to the Galatians speaks about how we are to serve our faithful God. He tells us that it is our responsibility to share each other's troubles and problems. Sometimes this means just being there to listen and console. Sometimes this means stopping what we are doing and figuring out how to solve a problem and then following through with that solution. Sometimes it means acknowledging that we are part of the problem and making a commitment to change our own behavior. And sometimes it may be a problem we can do nothing to fix except to pray for God's intervention. Our congregation has been without a permanent minister for 25 months. Fortunately, one of the legacies that Pastor Joyce left us with was being an, an empowered congregation where she helped us to develop and encouraged us to use our strengths to serve God and to serve each other. 
During all these months, we have stepped up and met many challenges. We went through the shutdown and reopening during the pandemic without missing a single worship service. We applied for and received a government loan which allowed us to continue paying our employees during the shutdown. And we applied for and received forgiveness for that loan. We welcomed three new members and kept in contact with our shut-ins by mail and by phone when they couldn't receive visitors. This spring, we began bringing communion to some of them again. We undertook a major renovation of the parsonage, staying true to our beliefs about using local merchants and contractors whenever possible, and using products that are better for the environment. We changed the way we did fundraisers and had several successful and fun events. I am so proud of what we accomplished and how well we worked together. As Paul wrote, be sure to do what you should, for then you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well. I think we deserve to take a moment and feel that satisfaction. I also think we need to remember that our work is not done. Having a new minister, even one as enthusiastic and energetic as Susan, does not mean we just wish her well and sit back and let her serve God. One of the things the search committee liked about her was her eagerness to work with an empowered congregation. Instead of being intimidated by the idea of active lay leaders, as some ministers would be, she is eager to continue and expand opportunities for us to work together. Now it is up to us to respond to those opportunities. Serving a faithful God is a big responsibility, but it is just a small token of our thankfulness for all that God has given us and done for us. As we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion in a few minutes, we will be reminded of the great sacrifice that Jesus made so that we could all be called the children of God. Just as there are chores for everyone to do in a family, there are chores for each of us to do here in God's family. Over the next couple of months, I encourage all of us to ponder how we can make the best use of our individual and group talents and gifts to make Old Saratoga Reformed Church a place where God's disciples work together to harvest the crop that has been planted. What can we do to support each other, people in our area, and people throughout the world in God's name? The possibilities are many. I was the worship leader the first Sunday after Joyce retired. And in that sermon, I wrote something which I still fervently believe. This is what I wrote. I, for one, hope we call a minister who will continue to teach us God's grace and to lead us to explore new ways to share that grace while staying true to the values that require us to take a stand against evil. I hope we will find someone to help us expand our mission programs. Many years ago, we gave to missions at the end of the year if there was enough money left in our bank account. Usually there wasn't. Under Pastor Joyce's time here, we worked on that and now have a budget that includes mission gifts, and as treasurer, I track donations for the various missions we support and send out donations throughout the year. It's a definite imp improvement, but I think we can do better. We are really good about working together to raise money to keep our church going. Yet I fear that if our only goal is to survive, then we will only survive. I truly believe that we need a mission project that goes beyond writing checks and involves us in helping others if we are going to thrive instead of just survive. 
I am confident that Pastor Susan will do her part. I hope we will meet the challenge of doing our part as well. Things will be different. They will change because we have a new minister and because we continue to deal with the pandemic and because time marches on and changes all around us. These changes will be small compared to what the 72 new disciples experienced or even what awaits Pastor Susan. The good news is that we serve a faithful God who blesses us anew each day and who calls us to join his other disciples in doing the work of his kingdom. To that faithful God be all glory and honor. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our hymn is number 782, Come Share the Lord. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance, communion, and hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent from the Father into the world 
to assume our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, he established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted by God and never be forsaken by him. We come to have communion with this same Christ who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, he makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us unto life eternal. In the cup of blessing, he comes to us as the vine in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. We come in hope believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and foretaste of the feast of love of which we shall partake when his kingdom has fully come, when with unveiled face we shall behold him, made like unto him in his glory. Since by his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ has obtained for us the life-giving spirit who unites us all in one body, so are we to receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of saints. All are welcome at the Lord's table. Come, for all things are now ready. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Holy and right it is and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. You created the heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence but you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God, with your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven. We worship and adore your glorious name singing holy, holy, holy. <laughs> Supper, the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless <coughs> may be to us the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. Grant that, being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many fields into the one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church 
may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is our communion in the body of Christ. After the same manner also he took the cup when they had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm. The cup of blessing which we bless is our communion in the blood of Christ.
brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at his table. Let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. <coughs> Excuse me. You have given yourself to us, O God, and fed us with your grace and spirit. Your love renews our trust. Your mercy fills our hearts with gratitude. We offer ourselves to you, O Lord, that we might share your love with others. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for calling us to be your people. We are blessed by all your gifts. Today we are especially grateful for the promise of a new pastor. Bless the work which we will do in your name and help our church to be a blessing to others. We thank you for the gift of your Son, our risen Savior, and for the celebration of the Sacrament of Holy Communion, which reminds us of his great sacrifice for us. Help us to live our lives in gratitude and to spread the news of your love and grace. We thank you for the resources of this earth that sustain our lives and ask that you would help us to share them. We celebrate the joys of summer sunshine vacation time, and the love of family and friends. Teach us to value what we have and to remember others who are not enjoying the same blessings. We ask you to be with those who are suffering from illness, sorrow, violence, natural disasters, injustice, and lack of the resources that we take for granted. Guide the leaders of the world to seek justice and fairness for all. We pray for our church as we prepare to begin a new phase of ministry and for your church throughout the world. Open our hearts to working for your kingdom and open the hearts of others to receiving the good news of your love. We pray these things and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 437, Help Us Accept Each Other, and we will be singing that to a tune that is more familiar than the one on that page.
Friends in the Lord, go forth in peace. Count on God to be faithful in his promises to care for us and share God's love with others. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.